This is the 3D Viewmaster booklet Close Encounters of the Third Kind. The UFO story. It is estimated that more than 15 million Americans believe they have seen unidentified flying objects. Of the people who have reported sighting UFOs, perhaps the most important has been Jimmy Carter, President of the United States. It was shortly after dark and 10 or 12 men all watched it. It seemed to move toward us, then partially away, then return, then depart. It was bluish, then reddish, luminous, not solid. The term flying saucer became part of the language in 1947 when Kenneth Arnold, a boy's Idaho businessman and an experienced air rescue pilot reported seeing nine disc-shaped objects flying in loose formation. Their motion was undulating, like a saucer skipping over the water. UFO sightings divided into three kinds of encounters. Close encounters of the first kind Sightings at close range, usually within a few hundred feet. Close encounters of the second kind, sightings followed by the finding of physical evidence, such as landing marks on the ground, scorched earth or broken vegetation. Close encounters of the third kind, the most dramatic of the sightings, when occupants of the UFO are seen and, in some cases, physical contact is made with them. Encounters of whatever kind seem to come in waves, say researchers. A sudden rush of sightings in the United States in 1952 was followed by a lull and then more observations in 1967. But whatever the category or frequency of sightings may be, one prime question remains unanswered. What is a UFO? Persisting and gaining support with the passage of time is the belief that intelligent life exists in outer space. So UFOs are thought by some to be visitors from other worlds. To others, the skeptics. The fact that UFO reports come in groups proves their theory of mass hysteria. Those people who have encounters are seeing things. 95% of all UFOs can be identified but it seems equally certain that the remaining 5% are not all hoaxes. UFOs that appear on a radar, break trees, stop cars and leave traces are more than hallucinations. Billions of suns in the universe are capable of supporting planets like our own. It is preposterous to think we are the only intelligent life in the universe. There is something mysterious going on and no one has all the answers. Close Encounters of the Third Kind offers an earth-shaking possibility. The story. It was 1973. An international investigating team stood in the blinding swirl of a desert sandstorm. In front of them, Mexican Federals guarded a group of Navy torpedo bombers, the type used in World War II. One of the team, a technician, held a calendar taken from a cockpit, the date 1945. There was no one in the planes. The flight along with its pilots and crew had been missing for nearly 30 years. 
You say the planes landed two days ago? The team leader, Lecombe, asked in French. Yes, one man saw it, said the American interpreter. Lecombe found his witness in a small cantina. Half of the Mexican's tanned face was blistered and sunburned. The man was crying and mumbled only a few words in Spanish. The American translated. He says, the sun came out last night. He says, it sang to him. It is a few years later, Roy Neary, a power company worker in Muncie, Indiana is called back to work because of a strange electrical blackout. Stopped at midnight on a back road, Neary tries to read a map inside his company truck. Lights loom behind his rig and Roy mentions the car around. Instead the lights rise up over the truck. An entire area for 30 yards around is illuminated as if there has been a silent explosion. Then the roar is deafening. Roy glances from the window and feels his face seared by burning light. Suddenly, lights and vibration are gone. A frightened Roy peers cautiously out his windshield to see a dark form with Blinking lights move silently away. More vibration than silence. A police report on the UFO puts it near Harbor Valley. Neary starts his truck and speeds off. On the way, Roy nearly runs over Chilean Gila and her four-year-old son, Barry. Almost before Roy can apologize, the trio is startled by three UFOs passing in quick succession. The first blinks bright autumn colors. The second looks like a Christmas tree ornament, while the third is clearly like a check o lantern. They play nice, Barry tells his mother. In the days that follow, Roy drives himself into a frenzy. First he forms a strange tower in chafing cream, then in mashed potatoes, and finally in clay. At last, Roy discovers the subject he has been modeling his devil's tower in Wyoming. Meanwhile, Barry has been seized from Chilean's arms, stolen away during another close encounter with the UFOs. Close to emotional collapse, Chilean and Roy travel to Wyoming and there discover a huge landing strip. It has been prepared in secret by world governments for a close encounter of the third kind. The same dazzling UFOs Chilean and Roy have seen back home hover over the landing field. Quickly, they communicate musical notes to Lacombe's team and their IARP synthesizer. It is a cosmic symphony, a kaleidoscope of electronic colors and sounds. Satisfied, the scout ships soar away. With luminous cloud and roll of thunder, the huge mothership appears, dwarfing Devil's Tower with its own immensity. Transfixed by the phantom ship, men look away or stand in awe. Chilean and Roy make their way to the field as the UFO lands. Out of the mothership's brilliant hatchway come aviators from the missing Navy flight. A tiny figure, three feet tall, Barry, runs out of the ship into Chilean's arms. Roy is dressed in a bright red suit and taken with 12 other astronauts aboard the starship. From the aura of light and electric mist, alien forms appear, not from Earth, but from beyond the stars. 
one steps forward, smiling, both greeting and farewell, in a moment the forms have vanished. The mothership rises, climbing until it comes, the brightest of stars is man alone in the universe. Now forever, the answer is no. At last, a new chapter begins in the history of the world. We want to add new videos every day, so please subscribe to our channel. And if you had fun, thumbs up.